Okay, today we're going to be working on a Kenmore French door refrigerator. This Kenmore is made by Whirlpool and Whirlpool also make uh, Maytag after 2006. So the repair that we're going to be doing today in this model it applies for Maytag refrigerators, side by size or French door and Whirlpool refrigerators as well. The problem that we have with this refrigerator, everything is running, compressor is running, uh, condenser fan motors running, evaporator fan motors running, it's just not cooling either side. So all the symptoms means that it could be low on Freon. So we install a piercing valve, as you can see, the refrigerator doesn't bring uh, access valve to in inject Freon. So you have to put a piercing valve. When we first put the piercing valve, it was reading 30 and negative. Right now I got it charged with nitrogen. That's why it's showing almost 100 PSI. But when I first put my gauges, it was reading 30 and negative. That means it's no Freon on this refrigerator. When it's basically no Freon on the refrigerator, that means it could be a big leak. So I got my fancy leak detector made by Jello Jack. Very good. I believe when I bought it, it was about 600 bucks. And um, it at the time it was the best one in the market. I don't know right now if it's the best one or better than this one out there, but at the time this was the best one on the market. So um, this leak detector is very helpful when it's free on on the system but since it was not free on it's it's no way to detect any free on because it's not free on in the line so what I did I, I set my nitrogen tank and I charged a hundred pounds of PSI and as you can see it's not holding it's going down so that means it's a leak and it's it's going down uh, kind of fast so we'll be able to hear or see uh, this leak so you put about between 100 120 psi of nitrogen and you will be able to find this leak with uh, soap water and soap make some bubbles and go through the all copper and aluminum line and you should be able to find this leak now what I found over the years it is then in this uh, Kenmore's Maytag and Whirlpool by manufacturing brings a copper line that goes inside of the drain pan. As you can see for some reason that line goes underneath the water that gets on the drain pan. So what I did is I fill it up. This, this drain pan was um, empty, dry. I pour some water in and I put nitrogen and 90% of the time the leak will be right there. So you can see in the picture in this video it shows the bubbles right there. So that's where the leak is and we going to repair it today. Yes, you know if this is something that I come up with it not too long ago. It would be easier if you fill it up the drain pan with water, put the nitrogen, and then just check. That's the first pipe you, you want to check if you have the model where this copper line goes inside the drain pan. The first place that you got to check is that one. You can either fill up the uh, drain pan with water or get a, a cup or something with soap and then go through the the first uh, line right there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to make some access to get to the uh, bad copper line and we're gonna have to remove this uh, fan motor fan motor blade and the fan motor housing remove the two screws that holds the housing the one quarter screws and remove this panel which is the one holds the uh, water supply for the 
ice maker and water supply uh, faucet. After you get it loose, just um, move it to the side. That way it gives you more space to work with. Now we're going to find a way to remove this housing without cracking the uh, drain pan. The drain pan is made out of plastic and you have to be careful not to break it or crack it. As you see some of these wires has like a strap and the strap has like a clamp. You press it on the other side and then it will come right out. That way you don't have to um, replace the strap. Now we're going to have to remove this harness and the harness on the other side. The other harness is the um, power supply for the whole refrigerator and this is part of the harness. There's another uh, strap clamp. Just press it and it will release. Same thing with this uh, harness. It has some uh, tabs. You release them and they will come right off. The hardest part of this job is um, remove this uh, fin housing without breaking uh, the drain pan. As you see, the other part of the harness comes loose. You move all that out of the way. And in some models, you might be able to get this fan out, uh, the uh, housing with the fan but you don't want to take any chances so you go ahead and remove the fan blade and there it is make sure put it somewhere far away from where you're working at because you can step on it very easy and then it will break then you will have to replace the uh, fan blade As you see, I have to remove this uh, fan motor because it was getting on the way. You go ahead and remove the uh, fan motor supports. Just turn it over and pull it out. That's the way it works. Turn it over. As you see, it can break, so might as well remove it. Turn it over and then pull it out and then it will come right off. Now you're trying to bend it to get it out. You have to work with it because it has two uh, uh, female, male, female uh, places right there where it have to be in. So you have to release the housing for, from that and then get it out. And this is what I'm talking about. As you see, that's a male female uh, I don't know how you call it uh, holder which it, it helps the uh, housing to be in place so you release it from that and then you can just bend it and pull it out grab that side what I was doing there is trying to get the uh, housing out of that uh, holder and you do that with the other side as well and just work it work it uh, the way out of this housing 
as you see if you bend it it will go in the other direction which should give you some space to get it out but I'm saying you need to be careful with the drain pin because if you do a bad move you crack the drain pin and then you have to replace the drain pin as well and there it is it's already out this is the biggest uh, mission out of this project and this video is most for uh, technicians not for people that want to do it themselves because you need to have the proper tools and the proper uh, training to do this repair now that's the pipe that's the uh, copper line that we have to replace and we're going to cut it from there to this um, spot and then we're going to replace whatever goes inside the water and i believe is um, a water and copper after a while it doesn't get along it just gets corroded and the corrosion eats the copper into a stars leaking now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and get this drain pan dry to be able to work better just get a piece of rag or sponge to help you remove that water out if you got like a little vacuum or something that will help too You see all the water is dirty because all the ice that was built up in the evaporator melts and all the water from the evaporator and refrigerator gets to this pan. Now what we want to do is we want to unsolder that part to get the other part of the um, copper line out. Oh, I'm going to show you that in a minute. So we're going to go ahead and put our copper cuts right there. And cut this part of the copper line first. Make sure don't uh, crack the pan like I've been saying. The um, drain pan is made out of plastic. It looks like it's, it's very strong, but you, you want to be careful. You don't want to end up replacing another part that was not estimated on the price or if you're doing it yourself if you got the tools to do this job yourself you don't want to go ahead and purchase a part that it was not need to be replaced there you go we already cut the first um, side of the uh, copper line and we're gonna go ahead the other side we can just grab a piece of plier because there's no space to uh, uh, put the uh, copper cut it behind there so just cut it which whichever tool you have to cut uh, wire wire cut it and then remove this piece we're gonna be replacing this piece any this piece anyways so it doesn't matter how you cut that pipe with we already got the bad part loose and 
and there you have it as you see it was some vacuum but it's no water um, coming out so that means there was no water inside the um, copper line or anything if, if it was like oil or or um, water inside the pipe that I removed we would have to do a flush out with uh, R11 uh, chemicals and this is the piercing valve that I'm removing we're going to be installing a new charge valve every time I'm soldering I use this paste and uh, put it around the uh, compressor that way if I overheat the line it's not going to damage right uh, right by the compressor this is a uh, heat absorbing uh, paste as you see right there heat absorbing paste if you don't have this paste just use a a rag a wet rag yes grab any piece of rag and then just put it where you don't want the uh, heat to damage close to where you're soldering or unsoldering Just grab a piece of shana locks or needle nose pliers and <clears throat> go ahead and heat it up. Needle nose was too small for me, so I grab a channel locks. And then you have to heat the pipe not just where it's solder, but like an inch. From where it's soldered you see it come right off you have to heat um, more than just where it's soldered because um, otherwise the you overheating and it can break right there and then it's gonna be a mission trying to get another pipe that's the part you see it goes like an inch inside the other side of the uh, uh, copper line coming out of the uh, compressor As you see, this is the part that we remove from the compressor. It goes on the other side. So what we're going to do is, this is the part that goes right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and replace and solder the part that is damaged. Which is this one. We're going to go ahead and replace the part and solder it. And we're going to go ahead and put the pipe already soldered where it goes. And I'm going to show you guys. This is the um, copper that we're going to be replacing. In this case, you can use this is a one quarter um, copper line. And this one is three eighths. It's a bit bigger than the original copper, but it doesn't matter because uh, it's not that big and it will not affect because the rest of the line is one quarter try not to go uh, much bigger you know a size bigger is is not a problem a size smaller could be a problem now i'm pre-soldering the part that there was uh damage before i put the uh the whole copper line back and solder it in the compressor as you see right there i pre-solder it now it's one piece and i'm going to be showing you in this picture just make sure whatever you're going to solder you put like a heat shield to prevent from damage on the floor as you see is already pre-soldered and to put it back in place, we're going to go ahead and remove this harness and move it out of the way because the uh, copper line has to go from uh, behind the compressor. And we're going to go ahead and put it behind this uh, drain line as well. Put a piece of tape, that way uh, nothing goes in 
any dust or anything then just remove the tape and put it back so you'll see I'm trying to put it uh, behind the compressor but I'm going to need my two hands so I'm going to put the phone away and I'm going to show you after it's already in the way as you see I got it behind there and that's the other part right there it goes to the compressor now put a piece of tape like I said all the time if you want to do a solder because you don't want anything to get in the uh, copper line so you see I'm trying to get it behind the um, drain line so I don't want anything to get inside this copper line As you see the other solder is on the other side and this is the other part that goes to the compressor and you always want to go ahead and uh, send, uh, get a piece of sandpaper and, and just send the pipe where you're going to be soldering uh, try to clean as much as you can with the uh, sandpaper the way solder um, grabs very easy And there it is. That's where the piece of the copper goes to the compressor. Try to remove uh, the drain pan from where you're going to be soldering. And again, go ahead and put a piece of heat shield, like a piece of metal behind where you're soldering. This is a piece of heat shield that came in a box when I was replacing a evaporator uh, coils in a model just like this one. So if you replace the those evaporators um, you should have you should get one of these heat shields. Heat shield you can go ahead and solder and then it will prevent from anything to damage behind the heat shield as you see I solder it I have to forward the video because I couldn't tape that I removed the piercing valve so we're gonna go ahead and uh, solder where the piercing valve was just put a little dot of solder or just cut right there and put your uh, charge valve right where the piercing valve was in this case I want to put it in in this uh, position <clears throat> excuse me and uh, this is my uh, charge valve that I'm going to be installing in here I made like a little coupling I'm going to put the uh, uh, heat absorbing around uh, the next solder because I don't want uh, the solder that is close to where I'm going to be soldering uh, gets loose and again if you don't have this uh, paste just as you see it's too close the other side is too close where I'm going to be soldering so I want to go ahead and put the uh, heat absorbing as you see I already soldered the uh, piercing and already uh, soldered the uh, charge valve the next thing you want to do is go ahead and charge uh, between 50 and 100 psi of nitrogen uh, and then check with uh, bubbles all the solders that you already have done as you see I'm charged 50 pounds 60 60 some pounds just charge between 50 and 100 and if it's a leak you should be able to get it uh, with that pressure to see now I got uh, soap and bubbles trying to see if all the solders are uh, okay the 
Just check all of them one by one. You don't want to go ahead and just uh, put the vacuum or charge it up with uh, Freon if you have a, a leak in one of your solders. As you see, it's been holding right where our charge is, so that means it's no leaks. If it would have less. Uh, in a few minutes if I would have less uh, nitrogen that means it's a leak somewhere you can do a second leak test when you do the vacuum when you do the vacuum I will show you guys in a minute it's supposed to hold in 30 uh, psi uh, negative which is vacuum and then if it doesn't hold in 30 that means it's a leak somewhere now we're gonna go ahead and put the vacuum Turn on the vacuum, and as you see, it's already pulling vacuum. And like I say, that's where I was talking about it have to be in 30. Just run the vacuum pump between uh, uh, 30 to 45 minutes. Then while you do the vacuum, go ahead and reinstall this harness. And go ahead and reassemble everything back. Uh, where it was just trying to position the uh, copper it doesn't have to be perfect uh, but you want to make sure the copper it's inside the drain pin again because you don't know if you don't put it inside the drain pin it's going to affect anything that's where it was and that's uh, where you want to put it back I mean it took about 10 years for this to happen um, and that's the other reason where you want to put a maybe a one size bigger than a copper because the 3H copper is thicker so it should last longer than than that so we're going to try to put this uh, condenser fan motor housing back in place and just make sure you be careful with that drain pin like I've been saying the whole time I've been recording this video, this is the hardest part of this video, of this uh, job. You need to be very patient when you're trying to put this housing uh, back where it goes. Once you get it in a straight angle, it's just easy to put it in the uh, male to female holders. As you see, it's right in place. The male female holder, it's in place. And this one as well. Then make sure that's right in place. Otherwise, the screws is not going to line up. You're not going to be able to put the screws where they belong. We had to put the two um, one quarter screws and go ahead and put the uh, back panel that goes on the water lines. Go ahead and insert the uh, fan blade frame either inside or behind. I'm just 
doing it this way but you can do it from the other side we're just trying to make sure that if I was going to be able to uh, insert it if I would decide to put the fan motor first now remember when you put this on you have to put it in and then twist it and put it in the position to uh, uh, strap the uh, the f uh, fan motor put all of them three as you see just bend it and then we get in position now remember how um, the fan motor was positioned and in this one I believe was position the harness was positioned like um, like so I suggest all the time before you do any repair go ahead and take pictures of the harness fan motors whatever you're gonna remove take pictures before you're removing because uh, later on you're gonna need to find out in what position uh, whatever you're removing is gonna be on put all this with three screws now the fan is right in place go ahead and put the fan blade and go ahead and put all the harness all the harness and the uh, the straps where they belong this one I'm gonna wait until I finish with the uh, vacuum to put where it goes because it's stuck uh, by the uh, charge valve yes connect the uh, fan motor so see everything is right where it was except for that one right there this is the uh, power um, harness and then you put it in into a clamp so you will hear a clamp as a matter of fact grab it from both um, sides into a clamp you might need two hands to do that and this is the last one and we're going to wait until we charge up the uh, unit it goes right there now we have our scale and you just uh, check inside the refrigerator and see inside the refrigerator should be a label saying how much freon this refrigerator needs and as you can see right there it says 5.00 ounce of R134A and that's exactly what we're gonna be charging this unit for 5 ounces if you charge five ounces you don't go wrong you don't you you make sure you don't overcharge it or undercharge it another thing you guys might ask why my recycling uh uh, tools was not in here it was no freon on the refrigerator it was nothing to be recycled so if it was free on the refrigerator I would have my recycling pump here and we would have to um, evacuate any freon residual in this um, refrigerator so you can see we have my scale right there And we're going to begin charging the uh, five ounces. As you see, the, char the freon um, levels is going down. So that means 
is Freon going into the refrigerator? You start charging the refrigerator with Freon without plugging in the refrigerator and it would take between two to three ounces. But then after it's not taken anymore, you go ahead and close the valve, uh, plugged in the refrigerator, and then go ahead and open the valve. As you see, I'm plugging in the uh, refrigerator to be able to charge the rest of the uh, five ounces that it needs. If you were to overcharge the machine for any reason, or it's an instruction somewhere, this uh, piece of copper will start freezing up. If you overcharge it, you're gonna need to have the recycling uh, uh, pump and remove Freon into the pipe is not frost. As you see, we already charged the five ounces. Compressor is getting warm. The pressure line is, is warm. And the uh, suction line is at uh, room temperature. So that's a very good indicator that everything uh, is working fine. Now, if your suction line was reading more than 10, it always have to be between 10 and zero. If it's reading more than 10 on your blue gauge, which is the low side, then you have an obstruction or a compressor valve a problem. But right now everything is working fine. You always have to wait about 15 minutes to make sure the pressure goes to a, a normal. It takes about 15, 20 minutes to adjust the temperature. I mean the uh, the pressures. You want to go ahead and just put the bed cover and we almost done with this repair now you might see that my scale might be reading that i put more or less than five ounces that's because the uh, gauge holes put some weight on the tank so what you do is you weigh the tank before and after doing the job to make sure you put the five ounces correctly that's it now if you're in the tampa florida area if you need this repair done just give us a call give us like in this video and comment and share thanks for watching